And they'll be really loud too because uh, they're dark chocolate crunchy M and M's. Ooh, I do like the dark chocolate M and M's, especially if they're mini. A little bit of ASMR. <laughs> music discussion ASMR, the classic combo. Talk about music while Sam loudly <laughs> chomps on some M and M's. Just imagining me trying to be like, yeah, so I think, uh, well, Airbag's not the strongest start to the album. Just like, ah. I'll, I'll, I'll try and resist chewing on them. Save them for after. A little, oh. little treat. A little treat. Treat yourself. I did not, I, I did not get to exercise today, so I'm not having any frozen yogurt because the sun goes down at 530. <laughs> <laughs> and it hurts it hurts a lot hey sacrifices need to be made yeah that means i gotta start running before running or biking before dinner as opposed to after so no oh, that's uh daylight savings times for you right yeah at least you got an extra hour of sleep that was kind of nice i stayed up too late so i didn't really but <laughs> hopefully yeah an extra hour 2 a.m became 1 a.m exactly Hopefully I'll be um, more on schedule now. Going up, going to Purdue really screwed me up. Uh, it's only a couple days. Yeah, but we were out. We oh, geez, sorry, just slapped my microphone. Uh, we were out pretty late, so. Oh uh, yeah, I guess so. We're exactly sticking to a healthy sleep schedule. Yeah. So you do anything fun in the? Uh, Two days I haven't seen you. <laughs> uh, two days. Yeah, uh, you hung out with that friend, days. right? Yeah, we hung out yesterday. That was fun. Uh, beyond that, not too much. Studied a bit for my test. Did some homework. Oh, you got a test coming up again? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> they, uh, You actually have to take more than one, Sam. I know your memory of college is a bit hazy, but... Uh, uh, did I have to do... I don't ones. think I ever had to do that. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I took one freshman year and that was it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure there was... I remember I there was tests. that one lab class where I would walk in and he would ask about threads on screws and everyone would finish in 15 minutes. But other than that, I don't, I don't think I ever took a test. Well, that seems fair. But yeah, beyond I, that, did a little bit of hiking today. Ooh, that sounds but. nice. You go to the celery bog? This what now? The celery bog. I'm not sure I know what you're referring to. It's next to the stadium. Everybody goes there. Come on, Goober. <laughs> I've never anyone. I've never heard the phrase celery bog before. Where, where'd you, you go? I went to Happy Hollow, the the forest. Oh, I'm, I I haven't been there. Is it nice? Oh yeah, we should go there sometime. It's perfect walking weather. Mm, well, you know, it's not going to be perfect walking weather for a bit. So. Oh, it's, it was really nice today. Well, yes, but I'm saying those those days are di diminishing. So unless I come up again really soon. Well, my doors are always open for a nice walk. Oh. You can drive up, we can walk, you can drive back. Mm. <laughs> That's sweet, but... Mm. <laughs> Although I will probably be coming back up because I was, I was talking to my sister the other day because she's wanting to um, build a computer. Because she was like, oh. I kind of want to play Overwatch. And I'm like, okay. She's like, what is Overwatch with so 2018. Now it's Overwatch 2. I can't believe, first off, that they actually called it Overwatch 2. But, you know, whatever. I, I mean, I guess that is common for games, but it's it just, especially for Overwatch, it feels like you should slap Electric Boogaloo on the end of that. <laughs> Overwatch 2, Electric Boogaloo. Especially and since yeah, it rhymes so well. Title. But, um,. She's like, yeah, I, I kind of want to play Overwatch. Uh, would, a, would a Switch be better that, for that or computer? I'm like, well... Computer, probably. Computer, because also the Switch has the Joy-Con drift issue. Yeah, mine's starting to get that. I'm upset. I'm upset. Well, I hardly ever play online, <laughs> so it's fine. Um, but yeah, so I was like, I was talking to her about stuff, and I'm like, well, you're going to have a hard time building something cheap. Actually, you know what? The surplus store is selling computers with i7s for 50 bucks. 
So yeah, maybe that would be good. the play. That'd be the way to go. Yeah. So I'm going to probably look into that for her after this, especially since I want to... I would like to have an, a, another computer actually I can actually do things on. Because I was looking at these computers I got here. Um, they're good, but like they're at the max the motherboards can support because like anything right. be below uh, the i series they changed to a different chipset on intel so okay i'm not, I'm not quite sure if i understand what that means but... okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah my i'm not too uh computer uh knowledgeable my sister is much the same what's ram <laughs> well you know you can go to some websites and download more free data dedicated ram mm -hmm. what's a hard drive do i need one of those yes yes you need a hard drive and a soft drive mm. or a solid state drive what's I an like os that. oh that's an operating system what's that you know, windows <laughs> or can i download one yeah but you know i i did all this stuff in high school so she just was more More. Not tech savvy. Ah, fair enough. Because I took all the tech classes. You stole it from her. Yeah. I'll need to make a desktop computer one day. Yeah, you do. <laughs> hey, this laptop's got me through thick and thin. The fact that you can't use Discord while playing a game is. <laughs> I mean, I can. Bad. It just it doesn't work very well. <laughs> Now, it, it might be good to check to see if it's a hardware issue or network. So That's true. Uh, I haven't had that problem too much. I think I might just be the avenue. Maybe. I'm not sure how to improve that. Um, if you, What you can do is um, have Task Manager open. Yeah. And see if anything's maxing out. And if not, it's probably the uh, Ethernet. Okay. Oh. So, but you know, where do I download Task Manager? <laughs> <laughs> Comes pre-installed, Cooper. Come on. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Joking. It's a joke. Are you though? Yeah. Oh crap. <laughs> we, I've been too busy chatting. I haven't sent out any of the notifications. You have a topic while I quickly do all this. Uh, topics. Um. Well, we recently celebrated Halloween. Um, I thought that was a very fun time. Mm hmm I agree. And uh, I've been eating a little bit of leftover candy, leftover uh, pumpkin pie that Molly had refused to take with her for some reason. How was it? It's good. It was two dollars and it was free. So yeah. So I've been munching on that. Wow, I did not. I just completely got wrapped up in talking. I didn't do anything that I normally do during these startups. Oh, well, there's. We got an extra hour. It's daylight savings time. No, that's, that's not how it works. <laughs> it feels like that's how it works. I wish that's how it worked. I actually woke up before my alarm. Wow. Time. Then I'm like, oh, I'll I didn't just set an alarm. The hour I, back. I woke up at like 11. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I'm starting to do things now. You got an exciting week planned, or is it just a bunch of uh, tests and homework? Oh, I got tests and homeworks, so uh, nothing, nothing uh, too crazy going on. But uh, it should be should be pretty chill overall. Just gearing up to uh, we're in November. I feel like the semester just started and we're already near the end. Well, don't worry, Time you got another one left. That's true. It's not the last one. Yeah. Time Although, flies, uh, I suppose. You'll be losing Malia, so you'll be uh, all alone. Oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> but you're right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I'm going to try. I have to admit, I wasn't too good with my workout regime in October. I let, I let a lot of days slip through the cracks because it's getting cold. And then like when I woke up, it was really dark. But it's daylight savings time. It's November now. So I'm like, okay, it's going to be nice and bright when I wake up. So that's my motivation. So I can get, I can be a buff boy. Plus all this 
Halloween candy and stuff is. <laughs> been going to my butt and my so, gut. I I didn't get any candy. I came home and I was like, "Hey, did you did you guys have any leftover candy?" And they're like, "Yeah, it's up in that little glass thing. There were two Twizzlers and like fifteen Hershey Kisses." I'm like, "Oh, okay." But then my mom bought some of these um dark chocolate crispy M Ms. So I've been uh. <laughs> munching on those and she bought some of these cups so it feels like halloween <laughs> even if i didn't have anything it makes you feel like halloween yeah no too late halloween's over it's christmas season. no it's thanksgiving nothing season but christmas now. okay shoppies nothing but christmas albums from here on out no for the next two months no. and maybe into january no christmas <laughs> too soon Tis the season nope you're not allowed to put your Christmas tree up until after Hall or after Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, it's after Halloween. No, nope, shut up. After Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, go for it. I don't care, but wait until Thanksgiving. Oh, don't be such a Scrooge McDuck. It's not even it's completely cold outside. Some days you can go out during the day and with shorts on. I think they call those a green Christmas. It's called the twelve days of Christmas, not the two months of Christmas. <laughs> I prefer the twelve weeks of Christmas. It's much more festive That's that too way. Much. <laughs> <laughs> all right you want to kick this off yeah let's go into it all righty into a decidedly not christmas album <laughs> yeah also not really well i guess it is kind of spooky for halloween it's definitely depressing for halloween hold on <laughs> uh i think you uh typed the uh, yeah, title of that wrong sam typo there on the title <laughs> uh, i don't i don't think it was called okay booper <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Audio Shop Podcast. Uh, today, I am joined, as always, by Cooper. <laughs> joined, yeah, we're the co-hosts. Yeah, I'm Cooper, and uh, I'm also joined by Sam. Yeah, what are you talking about? This is this is my show. Didn't? Oh well, I guess you do own the uh, Twitch stream. But... No, I mean you probably do more work for this at this point than I do. I just ha have all the hosting stuff. So you're, you're just the pretty face, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the. <laughs> I've I've really got the face for radio, <laughs> the face for uh, uh, for podcasts. Yeah, but uh, yeah, like uh, like the title says, we're going to be talking about OK Computer by Radiohead. Uh, we kind of landed on the sound because we won something that was a little little sinister, you know, a little bit uh, a little melancholic mm -hmm. since we are just in the Halloween season, and uh, nothing too spooky though. So I think that this rides the line pretty fine. Yeah, just just a little bit creepy at times, I'd say. Yeah, a little bit creepy, but nothing. Nothing too bad. Yeah, and it's a a pretty great album to boot, so I'm I'm excited to talk about it. So I'll I'll do the history since you usually launch into that. Uh, oh yeah, give us a little bit of background. Since you know I, I typed all this out myself. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, Radiohead was founded in 1985, and oh. How, yeah, how would you pronounce that one, right? How would you pronounce that, Cooper? I think it's Abingdon. Abingdon. I want to. My brain wants to throw a T in there, but you're, I think you're right. Uh, Abingdon, Ox, Oxfordshire. That's uh, England. Uh, in case the name didn't give it away. It, I feel like those names in themselves are like heavily heavy English jokes, you know. Just made up places, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> they sat at Ying into yeah. an Oxford. Uh, there are five cores. Four, bleh, man, okay, those, ooh, those M Ms are getting to me a little bit. Uh, there are five core members led by singer Thom York. That's Tom York. <laughs> Is that a typo there, Cooper? No, that's how his name spelled. T H O M. Mm -hmm. Tom York. Well, uh, that looks like Thom to me. Well, that's that's just how it's spelled, Sam. It's an English spelling. You know how they put like a U in color? That's true. Also, they use, I, I will say, as much as I dislike the U in random words, I do use the G-R-E-Y gray as opposed to the G-R-A-Y gray. I'm just glad I, I spell it either way yeah. because I never remember which is the right way. Uh, e for England, A for America. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, career kicked off with the single Creep on their first album, Pablo Honey. And uh, um, I know you're not super familiar with Radiohead, but I'm sure you've heard of Creep. It's probably one of their most uh, famous songs. Uh, I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo. 
Yeah, I, I, that sounds familiar. If I listen to it, I probably like, oh yeah, yeah. But I, I don't recognize the name. Um, but then again, I'm not super great about song names. Um, genres are art rock, electronica, and alternative. Um, although you could probably throw whatever the heck you wanted in there. Uh, alternative art rock probably would be <laughs> art electronica. Yeah. Um, Post modern. Um, pop electronica i think would be a good one and they've sold over uh, 30 million albums world worldwide now this yeah. album in particular uh, okay computer was released in 1997 so continuing the trend of uh, older albums here and yeah going to the back to the 90s again yeah it's considered one of the most influential and greatest albums of the 90s and i'm yeah. going to um uh contest that a little bit because this is not Will Smith. Um, (laughs) We said albums, not uh, historical landmarks. True, true. Like pieces of culture. Um, It marked a shift in the British rock to more melancholic sounds. Um, And it discusses social isolation in the digital age. And they're probably rolling over in their graves now. Um, (laughs) I mean, Tom York's not dead. I don't think any of them are dead. I mean, probably not, but they're still probably rolling in their graves. I mean, they definitely, uh, I mean, this came out in 1997, so the digital age was still kind of uh, in its infancy. Yeah. Uh, but uh, a lot of a lot of the themes on this album are even more pertinent today. Mm-hmm. This album's kind of grown more relevant with time, which you can't say that about a lot of uh, pop albums from the 90s. Mm-hmm. And, I don't uh, think uh, Sugar Ray is exactly the philosophers of their time. Yeah. It's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, the band is currently being held captive in the Library of Congress. Well, no, the, the albums in the Library of Congress. Oh, okay. They, Misunderstood. I think they let, they only let Tom York out every now and then to make a new album yeah. every five years. He only gets two bathroom breaks a day. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Radiohead. Uh, I'm quite a big fan of Radiohead, uh, actually. I've listened to their uh, whole discography uh, a couple times. And uh, obviously... Okay, computer. Even if you're not super familiar with uh, kind of alternative rock, you've probably probably at least heard the name thrown around a bit. Uh, it's one of those like big name albums, you know. Like, yeah, they, uh, they reference it quite a bit in uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation. Oh, they do. Yeah. Uh, do you remember what was it? Uh, Star Trek Four, the the whale movie. That was the <laughs> one that directed by Leonard Nimoy. There's the scene. Yes. Um, where Scotty and Bones contact a uh, was it an acrylic manufacturer to get enough acrylic to make this tank in the Klingon vessel, and um, Scotty is going to trade him the form the uh, was it molecular formula for clear aluminum in exchange yeah. for as much acrylic as they want, and he sits down at the computer and picks up the mouse and speaks into it and says, okay, computer. Oh. Is that, is that a reference to this album? No. Oh. <laughs> you, you just thought of that? Yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure it's oh. hello, computer. But... Well, the uh, the actual reference of okay, computer is to uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm. Uh, that's what Radiohead is referencing with this title album. We actually have a couple of references to that. Like uh, the song Paranoid Android is obviously mm-hmm. named after uh, what Marvin, yep. the Paranoid Android. The Paranoid Android. It's a uh, great book series. Not as terrible. Funny movie, as, but... <laughs> definitely not as funny as Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, I'd say they're going for very different tones. Very different. Hey, anyway, they're both British. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Radiohead had, had some influence. Uh, the sound, uh, even now, it sounds pretty cutting edge for something that was released over 20 years ago. Yeah, it sounds pretty dang modern. Um, Which you have to imagine, imagine listening to this back in 1997, right? Split your mind. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's got some, uh, and like like uh, Sam was saying, kind of uh, shifted uh, influence from uh, kind of a more poppy uh, British rock sound that you were hearing in the 90s is something some more uh, melancholic and uh, introspective sounds kind of inspired like uh, like uh, Coldplay and whatnot yeah uh, for better or for worse less Beatles so, more grunge exactly kind of put in that punk and grunge into the uh, m- the mainstream yeah jumping into the first track then if you're ready Coop 
Yeah, let's go right into it. Airbag. Track number one, Airbag. So, so uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, you're, no, the, you can you're the there. resident expert. <laughs> well, well, let's not say expert. Um, Tom York hasn't said so, so. But yeah, so uh, we'll jump right into Airbag. And uh, while the song overall I don't think has as much going for it as uh, a lot of the songs later in the album, I think it's got a, a bit of a tone setter, right? It kind of gives you all the ingredients that you're going to find throughout this album, mm-hmm. uh, which is, uh, you know, some electric guitar work, uh, Tom being a moody a moody boy with his vocals mm-hmm. over a very uh, established and very melancholic tone. That's going to be a word we're going to throw around a lot <laughs> on this uh, <laughs> during this review. And also uh, just uh, a song full of impressive guitar work, uh, which is also something that you find throughout this entire album. Um, I forget the exact name of the electric guitarist in Radiohead. I believe that's, um, yeah, Johnny Greenwood and uh, Colin Greenwood. The bro- they're, they're brothers. Um, do a lot of the uh, guitar in uh, this album. So the Greenwoods uh, really uh, start shining through even immediately on this album. Yeah. Yeah, the the guitar work right at the start alongside the strings sounds really, really nice. Um, I, it was even difficult at times to split them apart. They were, the style was being mimicked really well. Um, however, did not like the uh, the sleigh bells being used. <laughs> A bit yeah, too... there are some like some light jingle bells in the background. I guess you know it is the Christmas season, so you know they were just trying to pay a little homage to that. Um... <laughs> I don't, I don't think they knew what time of year we'd be listening to this, Cooper. <laughs> what, Twenty-two years in the future. Yeah. No, but um, yeah, I, I noticed that too. But I think it for me, this is almost like a uh, when I listen to this album, I kind of get a like a kind of light snow on a gray day kind of feel to it yeah so i don't know when i'm entering with that a little jingle kind of makes sense it it gets better as it goes on but right at the start it's a bit too noticeable a little on the uh in the front yeah yeah but uh like i said this uh it starts off with um you'll find throughout this entire album tom's uh, vocals just fit for uh, fit perfectly with the instrumentation uh they really just build off each other beautifully and, yeah, uh, it starts off uh, right here, like I said, um, and like I was saying, Airbag feels a little more like a like a teaser for the album than like a proper opening, just because it's a little more low key. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does have this uh, glitchy build up with guitars and electronica uh, near the end, which uh, a lot of these songs have really good uh, payoff as well. Well, I'd say quite a few of the songs, more more of the songs in this album are low key than not, but. Um... You, you're saying about the vocals they fit in really well but also it's another case of it's definitely more of the sound of the vocals than what's being said because dear lord if i could ever understand a word this man oh. is saying <laughs> yeah no, this is all about the emotion tom's trying to convey um <laughs> more than like the words he's attempting to say i mean a lot of the if you look into the lyrics a lot of the songs you know are kind of using a lot of metaphors um Im- imagery to kind of uh <laughs> convey what like this kind of more isolation that technology causes kind of displeasure with the system Mm -hmm. and kind of the uh, desperation and paranoia that that kind of induces. Um, But I feel like even if you don't listen closely to the words or even if you try to, it's Tom's just like jumping all over the place. You can't follow him. Yeah. Uh, The instrumentation of the song kind of bring those ideas to the forefront. Anyways, they're kind of working in tandem. Yeah, and it and uh, as this is electronica, they've got it's not super heavy on the electronica. It's very kind of uh, light, not too filling. Um, <laughs> it's got some nice electric noise filtering on the drum set later on, and some kind of little just noises that they occasionally throw in. And then right at the end, they've got like this really high pitched electronic squeaking. Um, that's part of the build, but is pretty annoying. Um, I don't know. I, know, I like that. that. I, I like the little flourishes they add like that. Uh, even if it's a little distracting, it kind of, uh, like I said, adds to the mood of it. Yeah. I f- uh, sometimes they just take them a bit too far, I think. Yeah. In, in a couple places. We may have gone a bit far in a couple places. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> the classic but, uh, George Lucas quote <laughs> George Lucas of Radiohead fame. Uh, no. But 
Yeah, but like I said, I think it kind of adds to the characters. And they usually toss us in there at the end of the song anyways. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of form a transition. Big fans of leaving a bad taste in your mouth. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> now that, that'd also be George Lucas. Uh, Jumping to track number two then. Track number two, Paranoid Android. Ooh, and now this song. This is now, a good now song. This, make, this makes uh, airbag look like, like the... Uh, like the uh, appetizer. Mm -hmm. Like you're just filling up on bread and then they hit you with the main course here with Paranoid Android. Because this song is... Um, I'm sure you noticed, but uh, the song's actually divided into four pretty distinct sections. Um, bold of you to assume yeah. I noticed that. Huh? But well, I said uh, I'm sure you noticed that it, it changed instrumentation pretty uh, frequently in this one. I'm sure I did. I mean, I listened to the song like three or four times, but even then... Yeah, because it kind of starts off um, with this kind of this really beautiful acoustic lick mm -hmm. uh, that's just paired with Tom's vocals over these kind of plinging electronic like keyboards. So the first song's like a, or the first part of the song's very uh, low key and uh, leads into that kind of isolated, desperate feel, and then at like the two minute mark. It switches bass lines to key signatures and goes for this really angry edge. It's mm -hmm. like a, a rock solo breaks in. Ooh. Yeah, the I really enjoyed the beginning. It's really nice and acoustic. Those um, I don't know if you picked up the very harsh clacking noise in the background. I don't know how to describe it. It's like two bones being hit together. <laughs> um, they used to use those for marching band, and they gave me flashbacks. Bones. Yeah, uh, I, I, they're they're like two pieces of stone that make a very loud clicking noise. Um, okay. And then the 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 other one is the uh, instrument that's just a rent, lint roller, but with beads instead of sticky stuff that they just twist back and forth. <laughs> you know that one. Um, but they would, you know, they work very well. My, f I really like in this one though, where um, I I couldn't tell initially if it was Microsoft Sam's voice or Stephen Hawking. A little bit of talking underneath with that was a cool effect. Oh, yeah, like the uh, robotic, like uh, the, the robo voice, just kind of saying words yeah, in the yeah. background underneath Tom's vocals. And you can't really hear what's being said, but you get the, you can hear the voice and you're like, okay, that's a computerized voice. Yeah, it kind of feeds into that kind of almost poke apocalyptic, like dystopian uh, Blade Runner type future they're going for. Yeah, poke, -apoc poke, -apoc <laughs> poke apocalyptic. Yeah, that. <laughs> pocahontas liptic uh but uh, yeah and that's not the last time you'll hear the robotic voice on this album yeah uh <laughs> you'll hear him later um and then like i said it goes with that kind of angrier uh edge at the two minute mark where the bass comes in tom's vocals get a little more a little more nasty mm -hmm. a little more angry and then like with that ooh, with that rock solo it's a it's a perfect like mounting of emotion yeah that leads to this really uh breakaway moment about four minutes in or like this kind of ghostly choir comes in mm -hmm. as Tom goes back to the, like the sad boy vocals and it, uh, it's almost like a little ascendant. Yeah. That, that shift from the, you know, the kind of intro section to the harder electric was so smooth. It was like, Oh, it's suddenly electric style. I couldn't really pin down where it had started. You know, it very yeah, just kind of switched over super nice yeah, it doesn't feel like two songs smashed together yeah you know, it yeah. feels like a natural progression as they go to like each of these different uh sections of the song which is rare yeah it's it's really well done mm -hmm. like if you even if you aren't paying it if you like aren't paying attention to it like you don't even notice it it's that good mm -hmm. um, um and then like you were saying before they bring back the 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 nice bass which you know underappreciated i think it was the bass was pretty solid throughout this entire album even when their other uh other parts faltered and the uh the choir um this is this is about where the song loses me a little bit the choir with the main singer is nice but i'm not sure this section needs to be as long as it is um it's already a pretty long song and doesn't need the padding um how oh, i don't think it's padding at all i i it think just, it, it, it just feels like a bit too long the length on this section, I think, kind of leaves it room to breathe, mm. right? Because if you kind of rush to, if, like, this third section, where it's, like, the ghostly choir, Tom kind of amusing and least heartbroken vocals, I think if you kind of try to squeeze that into a shorter time frame, the effect would be 
lost or at least diminished. Well, it certainly wouldn't feel if you're squeezing it if you chopped off the random 22nd rock section at the end. I think it should. Oh, but I love the rock section at the end. It's good, but it's it feels out of place. It should have ended on that angelic, you know, kind of haunting feeling. Maybe snipped it back a bit and not slap that rock on because it just it just kind of that one that transition doesn't feel good that one's a bit abrupt oh no i like that one too because it's already established the uh with the first two transitions kind of went from soft to loud and then went back to soft and then has the payoff at the end with one more rock solo but I, I feel like it uh, earned it with that it's kind of only like 20 seconds there. it's if it was longer okay but it just feels rushed you know Wait, so it's both rushed and too long? No, 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 no. So the choir section is too long, but the rock section at the end is rushed. So you can either cut back the... Either way, cut back the choir section. But if you cut nah. back the choir section, chop off the rock. And if you don't cut back the choir section, make the rock section at the end longer. Nah, I, I, I like the, the lengths they are at right now, just because I feel like the choir section needs to have room to breathe. And then having all the energy packed into such a small punch at the end uh, kind of works to leave a lasting impression, um, at least in my tastes. Um, honestly, there's not too much I would want to change about this song. Um, I think it sets out to do exactly what's it, what it wants to, which is kind of have this like mixture of anger and despair, mm. kind of switching back and forth. Which I guess, you know, Paranoid Android is kind of going for that futuristic sadness. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think it's uh, achieved its effect brilliantly. Um, though, though I can see why, you know, may, maybe cutting back a little bit from the six minutes might be seen as positive. But for me, I, I wouldn't change a thing in this song. Well, to each their own. True. Well, let's call uh, Tom York and <laughs> ask him about it. If we released... Uh, for OK Computer, since it's like been so well received, they've released this edition. There's a collector's reissue that they released back in 2009. Uh, there was a remastered uh, back in 2017 um, with like a bunch of, uh, what is it? Like uh, previously unreleased tracks and like uh, extra snippets, and, like studio versions and stuff. Okay. And then back in this year, uh, in 2019, they released a... Uh, little thing called mini disc mini discs hacked which is basically some guy hacked um <laughs> radiohead and released all their like outtakes and demos from like, okay computer so they just re they just released uh this thing <laughs> which was pretty much all the outtakes that, that were uh, leaked huh so basically you can hear anything you want from uh, okay computer well i don't think i'm gonna go search that out but that is a good. Uh, that is nice to have, to hear no, all the I, different uh, versions. I would. I would recommend. I listened to the, um, and I'm assuming you did too, Sam. The uh, original version of OK Computer. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. But the uh, actually the 2017 uh, remix or uh, remake, uh, the OK Not OK, uh, OK Computer, <laughs> is uh, very good as well. And it has a bunch of little snippets. So if you like this album, that's something you can check out as well. Mm -hmm. Jump into so that's more of a completionist kind of way of looking at it. You're all about that completion. Oh, I am. Jump into track number three then if you're ready. Oh, let's do it. Subterranean Homesick Alien. Subterranean. <laughs> I, I love some of these titles because they have almost nothing to do with the songs themselves. <laughs> Yeah, they're pretty uh, random at times, but at the same time, I kind of I kind of get what it's going because this one has a dang. This one has some good melodic licks. Like mm -hmm. this one has a uh, so it's like nostalgic and forlorn and melancholic, kind of all wrapped into one. Um, and of course, Tom's vocals on this song are great as always, especially when in the verse they're like very low key, very uh, subdued. And then once he hits the chorus, he kind of really starts to build up with the up tight, up tight. Yeah, and I, I, <laughs> I got this feeling a bit early on, but I, I'm, I don't think I'd be able to tell which song I was listening to based on the singing. It, it's a bit samey for me. Um, 
I, I recognize that he changes it up a little bit, but overall he just kind of sings the same style every song. Um, and there are parts where he's uh, much lower, but he gets up to that. He's very, a big fan of that kind of screamy kind of singing. You know what I'm talking about? It's not screamy. Well, no, it's not screamy, but it's it's um, belting it out. And he does it in the same way in a lot of the songs. And it, it getting a bit further in the review than uh, than we are, but um, it it just gets a bit too samey for me they're not they're not bringing fresh freshness to the table but i mean maybe the vocalization isn't as varied as possible yeah i think it with the changing instrumentation underneath it um it kind of puts it to new lights throughout the album Mm -hmm. uh, which i think is also a good way to expose freshness is kind of approaching maybe the same vocal stylings and new angles yeah plus i think he changes it up enough to keep things interesting yeah like with this one with the resonating bass and the the kind of far off electric guitar oh yeah the guitar work on this song uh in particular is also really good um you you can really see why it's uh the sound was a bit of a trendsetter but just how uh they were able to have all these electronics uh flourishes it's like the guitar with the futuristic edge uh it's uh really builds the you, even by track three, you've already got a, the character of this album mm-hmm. uh, in your mind. And there was a was there was one effect they had that was the uh, the approach and fade on the electric guitar that was really nice. It helps like give that a f- ethereal feeling on the song, like you're falling through a rainy day. That's the impression I got. Oh yeah, kind of. I, I got that with the kind of ebb and flow it felt. Mm-hmm. I yeah. really appreciate that as well. I will say. I think this song sounds very good, but I think it sticks around too long. Um, it it feels like quite a few of these songs they're just like, well, it's got to be over four minutes, you know. So this this one had a bit too much in it. That was just it hit it hit the 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 uh, the max point about three minutes, and then from then on out they just kind of you know like all right let's let's repeat till we get to four four minutes. I mean, I I can agree that it's uh it doesn't quite have the build up <laughs> or the payoff that uh that paranoid android or like even airbag had, but I think it was kind of trying to go for the more um consistent low key vibe, yeah, a little more uh so plus it's only four minutes long. It's not like a particular. It was like six minutes of this. Maybe it'd be a little over saying it's welcome. True, but, but I made that comment because this song and the next song are both the same length, and I can't help but feel that is not on purpose. I mean, maybe, maybe not. I, yeah. I don't know Tom York's mind. It may just have been how that happened to uh, pan out. That's a heck of a coincidence. Huh, I mean, out of 12 songs, them being pretty similar to each other in length. They're all kind of close to each other in terms of length. True. So, but uh, speaking of the next song, if you're ready, yeah, we can move on to track number four, Exit Music, for a film. Uh, which uh, I'm not sure what film is uh, <laughs> ending on, on this song. <laughs> Since it's a very, this one's a very sad song. Yeah. Yeah, the, the intro really sets it up with just extremely basic guitar strumming for 20 seconds before anything else happens which i like it's like really is uh the kind of empty space of it i think uh sets up the character of the song uh before tom york's really really subdued a very uh he goes deep and uh it's almost like he's whispering Mm. um over just this acoustic entrance uh kind of built at like uh Almost like someone's trying to like tell you a secret that they're really upset about. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna hate me for this, but he's he's like two millimeters away from being too close to the microphone. He how? Okay, I think <laughs> you always bring up people being too close to. The, I, I think you you're saying that's a negative more than it should be. It. I just really, really dislike the feeling of people speaking directly into my ear, and he's dangerously close to being there. Um, but. I can actually understand what he's saying now. So it's kind of double-edged sword. I feel like, especially he pulls out back and how like soft. The... All right, Sam. Oop. Can you, uh, can you repeat that Cooper? We kind of lost you there. 
Oh, did uh, where did I cut off at? Uh, the beginning. Oh, I just said, um, given how like softly he was singing at the beginning of the song, and I, th I think I mean you kind of have to be close to the microphone for that. And honestly, I'm never bothered by the fact that they get a little up close and personal as long as it kind of suits their singing style. Yeah, yeah, no, this one, this one's fine. I can just tell he's about too close. <laughs> He's not too close, but he's almost there. It, but this, I like this singing style more than what he's been doing. Um, it, I don't know what it is. I, maybe it's because of the um, the inspiration that other bands have taken from them. But I just am not a fan of the style. You know, it's which like, yeah, you can't be blamed there. There's definitely a particular form of singing. Yeah. Where it's like almost more emotion than like technical ability. Mm -hmm. Not that Tommy Orr is a bad singer. No, he, no, he obviously yeah. has a great talent. Um, but I, I get what you mean. Where if that's like not to your taste, this album's only that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it still sounds very good. Um, I think I would like it a lot more. I, I have some comparisons later on that I'll give. Um, but um. The, this one had the really cool they have a lot of cool effects throughout this album that i like um this one had the choir and the organ kind of going together Ooh. and the choir would um i i couldn't tell if it was a synth choir or not i feel like it is because the the choir would cut off and instantly switch to a different note um i'm pretty sure it's a synth choir it it sounds uh. like it but there were points where i was like well i'm not i'm not super sure um which honestly i kind of like the ambiguity yeah uh obviously the theme okay computer kind of has this kind of like i said futuristic uh theme to it so this kind of treading the line between human and electronic mm. even vocals uh even that feeds into the theme yeah it produces like a slightly creepy vibe like uh what the uncanny valley yeah yeah exactly where you're not quite sure what you're listening to yeah kind of spooks you out Plus, I think this uh, this song, honestly, I think that's like the best payoff on the entire album. Or after the, the really slow build up with just the vocals and the acoustic, mm -hmm. then like a, the drum and this deep uh, deep synth kick in with that choir, and then Tom like really goes off with his vocal, mm -hmm. or he's uh, obviously pulls back and he's like a, a lot louder and like really like it's like a flood of emotion coming through. Yeah. Um, and there's that really uh, dirty bass line that drops in. Ooh, I do like that bass line. It's pretty good. Um, before that, there's a bit of a looping sound clip. I, I don't know if you picked up on that. It it was a kind of, I don't know. It fell a little bit out of place, but thankfully it didn't stick around long. But again, that was just kind of the... Maybe that was what they were going for, just a bit of unsettling noise. Um, and then certainly a bit of unsettling was at the end, they had a wind blowing into a microphone <laughs> added <laughs> at the last like 30 or so seconds. Oh yeah, that's whenever uh, everything kind of drops out, and it's mm -hmm. only Tom's sad boy vocals. It, it sounds like he's about to cry. Yeah, at the very end. Which, uh, the, I re I really dig this song, front yeah, to back. A, it's a good song. It's like the whole emotional journey in four and a half minutes. And then, uh, yeah, if we're, if you're good with that, Sam. Yeah, jump into track number five, "Let Down." let down which is i think a very <laughs> the exact uh very different from uh the previous song uh let's say uh, it lives up to its title oh hey whoa <laughs> I, i'd argue but uh i kind of agree so but i get we should approach this from the front um but the song definitely feels a lot more um poppy uh compared to the uh previous songs would you agree yeah i i compared it to the stereotypical happy sounding song on an edge pop album yeah like it's not completely free from the 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 kind of um mysterious sadness that's kind of been this album but something a lot more upbeat mm -hmm. like surprisingly upbeat um uh, especially in terms of uh tom's vocals yeah yeah it, it has a good sound but there's just like something about it that makes it hard to focus on you know um, like it's a little blurry it's it's not like there's a lot going on it's just kind of there like you you like you got some soap in your eyes and you can't really focus on it i, I don't want to say generic but that's the vibe i got from it you know it's got some nice beeping and booping 
but <laughs> otherwise it just feels kind of unremarkable like the kind of thing that would be playing very softly in the background of the uh, doctor's waiting room or something yeah given how like fantastic the album's been so far this one definitely feels a little more standard um for like a alternative rock song in the 90s mm-hmm. um I guess it just doesn't seem to play as well into the themes of the album. And uh, I mean, it, it's still got some cool effects. Tom's got like vocals in both ears kind of yeah. going on. And the energetic take on uh, uh, on this album is, uh, you know, it's definitely new compared to what we've had in the last four songs. Yeah. But it kind of, it kind of feels out of place. A bit of a, a bit of a sore thumb uh, sticking out. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's completely palatable. Um, uh, it's pretty inoffensive overall. Yeah, it's just offensively inoffensive. I'd say. I think that'd be a good way of putting it. If it, even if it was like did something that didn't work, at least it'd have been trying something. Yeah, it's but this one's you know two steps above elevator music. It, it, if I heard this in elevator music, I wouldn't miss a beat. Yeah. If I heard uh, Paranoid Android in an elevator, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what are they doing here? Yeah. Uh, jump into track six then if you're ready oh yeah i didn't have much to say about five yeah karma police karma police uh this song um based on uh i was reading some interviews uh karma police is supposed to be referring to uh basically the feeling of uh having to deal with middle management how they like try to police your every move in like a modern day society Hmm. okay or at least that's what Tom said he was going for. Yeah, the artists always have a different feeling that they try and convey that the song usually doesn't convey. Yeah, but it definitely has a feeling of... Uh, I wouldn't say it goes for oppressiveness, but it definitely goes for... It, it goes back into the acoustic sad times. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think this track I really benefits from the use of a uh, piano. Yes. Um, which honestly, it, the piano barely appears anywhere on this album. Uh, besides karma police and whatever the chorus comes in and the vocals are really subtle and low key and that little da 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 kind of like kicks in with the piano ooh, gives me shivers yeah yeah i i really like the breakdowns um with the the just the piano tom and the guitar um but i, I i'm gonna be a broken record for this it i feel like the song doesn't really go anywhere you know like it's got some cool things every once in a while, but in that, it just where it was at the beginning is pretty much where it is at the end. Um, uh, I wouldn't say that. I mean, the beginning is very starts kind of like just with the uh, acoustic and Tom's vocals, and while there's not like a particular explosive end, I think as like the piano line develops and the chorus comes in and Tom's vocals really start to do with the heavy lifting, I think it has a proper arc. Yeah, I, um, at least for me, I I feel like uh, I'm I'm judging it based on um what it spawned as well, you know, like kind of the 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 kind of the killers and the cult plays in the future. Yeah, it's very 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 overdone at this point, and I think I was tired of the sound before I even started listening to the album, you know. Yes, and that's not their fault. It's they're you know killed by their success kind of thing but it's just grading (laughs) is the best way i can put it i mean i wouldn't put it as grading i mean i i like this type of sound it it Um, sounds nice i agree but it's just like i don't i don't listen to that kind of music it's just and there's so much of it like how many years has coldplay been around too many like 2000 (laughs) 20 years yeah so it's just they ha- they cr- came up with an amazing sound and then somebody else stole the car and crashed it into a bridge you know <laughs> um after driving 6000 miles so it's well i agree maybe the sound's a little has been overplayed especially in the 2000s um honestly even coming back to this is like the source i think it still leaks above uh oh i agree the, but the often uh what is it the often uh often uh replicated never duplicated thing kind of going on yeah. where like no one's quite reached the peak of uh radiohead i agree but still not not a huge fan of the sound of this one it's i mean it, there's nothing again it's 
inoffensive and i think that's what it boils down to is it's it it was revolutionary at the time but then the countless bands that followed perverted it into the most generic kind of sound possible you know i I like to think this i i don't really get a generic feel from this album um even maybe i'm able to like kind of separate the the uh the uh sound that follows it yeah um just because i've listened to this album before um but i i think especially uh karma police still manages to set itself apart um just with excellent guitar work tom york's vocals um the kind of uh the theming of the album i feel like i think i think their incorporation of the electronic into the rock um which is usually very subtle um works to separate them as well yeah I mean, I feel like there's better examples of guitar work than this one, but you know, t- I, oh, the piano sense. is extremely nice. The piano, I think, is what saves this song. Oh yeah, it definitely adds a, a new element to it that makes it more memorable. Yeah, that ends with a uh, repeating kind of electronic distortion feed uh, that leads into the uh, next uh, skit. I guess we can call it. Yeah, that's what I called it. Uh, which is track number seven, "Fitter, Happier." Now, for so. as much shade as i've been throwing at this album as i have i absolutely love microsoft sam so they <laughs> they have my vote on this one um well this is this is nothing but two minutes of microsoft sam yeah i lo- i don't know why i love that voice so much but it just brings so much joy it's this one is really nice creepy kind of feeling it's it's got some music going on so i want to say song but it's more of a skit i'd say skit yeah and uh, i mean it's got like the piano and like some news clips playing yeah. in the background but yeah, that's definitely the, the creepiest point on the album. And the, the lyrics keep getting like weirder as it go along goes along too. Yeah, it kind of starts with like this the the Microsoft Sam kind of saying this kind of saying segments of sentences are like of things you should do to live better. It's like eat more healthy, exercise daily, go to the gym, do better at your job. And they're like, yeah, like you said, slowly devolves into like be a pig, stay in your pen, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, but I, you know, Microsoft Sam, so it wins. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I think it got its idea across. That yeah, right. yeah, that would, and it didn't. It didn't stick around. I think is important. You you want to want to listen to a, the six minute uh, re- recut of Microsoft Sam? As much as I like Microsoft Sam, no. <laughs> that that would be a lot of it. But yeah, I think it, it got its idea across, and then you know, kind of went away. Yeah. So. Yeah. Then it leads us into uh, the next track, track number eight, Electioneering. And uh, this one actually is, uh, this is definitely a different take on it, because this is almost, uh, goes from like alt rock to almost just rock. Yeah. Yeah, it's a back uh, to back to a bit of the harder stuff now with a rock and guitar line, which is a bit welcome after, the, it's been pretty slow um, since Paranoid Android, I felt. Um, which isn't bad. I prefer the term methodical, but yeah, it's definitely been a little more uh, uh, a low key. subdued rather. Subdued would be yeah. a good term. And the, but yeah, this one kind of explodes. They got the uh, the distant cowbell. It's like they didn't let the dude in the studio with them. <laughs> He's just out like in the hallway. Like, we'll let you play, but you have to be in the bathroom. Yeah. Yes, in the stall. I, I um, really like when they do effects like that. It's it it shows that they wanted to use the instrument, but they wanted to do something to set it apart. You know from super yeah. generic usage yeah plus um and this is kind of i think the song kind of comes to my defense in terms of time york's vocals are a little more versatile just because this song is obviously going for kind of a rock slightly punk vibe um and i think tom's uh vocals work great on the song as well um as he kind of leads into a little bit of a uh, little bit of attitude uh, that goes into uh, kind of against the system instead of like, oh, the system's oppressing me. Boo-hoo. Yeah, I'm actually going to disagree with you again because I was starting to get sick of it before the vocals dropped out. Um, what, the song? Yeah. Um, the music is amazing. Once the vocals drop out, the last like minute and a half, two minutes of the song, incredible instrumental work. There was just something going on with the vocals that really was not vibing with me. I don't know. Like, it, it was... I didn't even notice how good the instrumentals were until the vocals dropped out. 
So I'm not sure what was going on there. There's just something with his voice that clearly my subconscious does not like. So, I mean, I, I can see it being construed as maybe a bit of a whine. Maybe. Um, I mean, I dig Tom circles. Um, and obviously, if, if you don't, then <laughs> they're going to be a little distracting on yeah, this Yeah, I mean, I, I thought I liked them, but going back through what I've written, clearly I didn't, so... <laughs> <laughs> He's tricked you. Yeah. Tom's pulled a fast one on you. Yeah. I don't know, but this, I think this is the point where I was starting to get those feelings of, okay, it's it's getting a bit, my parents listened to a crap load of Coldplay while I was growing up, so I think this is where it's coming from. Um, I, it was getting to the point where I was like, this is bringing up a lot of two hour car rides with six cold play albums <laughs> ah so th- this is this is the truth comes out it's yeah. traumatizing childhood <laughs> yeah uh that's putting you off of a radio head i mean if anything electioneering is probably the farthest they get from the kind of br- r- uh, pop sound oh yeah no i i completely agree but this is i think the change is what made me realize think back to the other style and be like oh okay yeah so it, it kind of serves as that uh the mirror to it yeah yeah it's but this is i really enjoy this one it's nice that again incredible instrument work throughout the whole thing yeah the greenwood brothers are really go off on this song in terms of the electric guitar it's so dense there's so much going on Mm -hmm. i really like it yeah and uh i mean obviously you're kind of going for a genre change in the middle of the album uh that can lead to not great results we have seen that in the past oh yeah um, but I think here it actually manages to fit in uh, better than the genre change that was let down's more poppy sound. Yeah, this one manages to feed off the energy, kind of take it in a more aggressive uh, route, sure, but kind of still maintain that quality. Yeah, and then a nice clean finish to it. Cool and clean, and no caffeine, right, Sam? There you go. <laughs> uh, jump yeah, into then... track number nine, then, if you're ready, Coop. Oh yeah, we can do it. Climbing up the walls. Climbing up the walls. So this this one I got. This is another creepy one I felt, um, which they're really good at doing without really un- you understanding why you think it's creepy. They're good at like towing that unc- uncanny valley line. Yeah, it's um, not like go- ghosts and goblins. It's just like exactly something's dystopian. It's like off putting. Yeah, there's something off, but you're not sure what. Which and, I think. Uh, yeah, that's that's a hard thing to capture, and they managed mm. to do it on this album. Uh, the cover art, I think, kind of goes for that, like this highway with like these weird ghostly figures going across it. Mm. What am I even looking at? And but, uh, uh, you're gonna hate me again for this, but the f- song feels better once the vocals drop out. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I don't know. This is at this point, I'm like, I'm not sure why I keep writing this. Um, I don't think any chain thing changed. Maybe it's a fatigue to the style, which, you know, we've already kind of talked about. I mean, I think Tom's vocals on this one are, they're definitely like in the higher register, mm-hmm. uh, which wasn't my favorite way of his singing, um, especially on this album. Um, I mean, it kind of has some interesting vocal distortion that goes on, but it's kind of, this kind of higher register that's also laid back. Yeah. Which can lack a little bit of urgency and energy, um, especially on uh, this song. I mean, it does pick up a little near the end, uh, mm-hmm. but he still kind of stays in the high range. Yeah. I, so I'll, I'll stop bringing it up, but it's it, it was a constant sticking point for me throughout the <laughs> album. For me, I, I like uh, Tom's... Uh, vocals i can understand how they can be seen can uh can be seen as a little bit more whiny and maybe uh not quite as uh very yeah but uh for me i i appreciate the emotions that's lost plus it probably helps that i've listened to their discography so i've been able to like see his uh vocal stylings kind of mature yeah yeah this one did have um they they have a, a creepy outro again i don't know what was creepy about it but it was creepy and they had like a I don't know how to describe it other than a bubbly guitar. Bubbly. Yeah, like bubbles rising up. You know? Did you get that? No, I, I I can see what you mean. I kind of almost got like a 
almost like a TV static feel from it. I can see like, from. like like if a guitar could somehow have TV static. Mm -hmm. Um, that is at least what I got. But yeah, that kind of teetering feeling uh, nice. that you get. Nice little uh, end cap to the song. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the songs, it's not like this album like necessarily like flows together. No. Yeah. Um, that's like one big concept album. But I, I feel like the energy is made just like feed into one another. Uh, especially like these with these little ending uh, quirks that they add mm -hmm. before you head on to the next song. Which, uh, speaking of which, we can, uh, if you're good, we can head on to track number 10. No surprises. So this one was, I don't want to say stereotypical, but um, I got that vibe anyway. Not not in a bad way, but just very happy sounding with really heavy lyrics. Uh, bring down the government, they don't speak for us. <laughs> yeah, this one definitely has a uh, childlike quality to it. Yeah, I think that's just because of that uh, glockenspiel that we have. Uh... Okay, so I noticed that too. What is going on? Like, why have so many of the albums we've listened to have Glockenspiel? Did you pull up a list of albums that use Glockenspiel and you've been waiting for me to catch on? Is that what's going on here, Cooper? What, Sam? Closes out tabs. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't even know what a Glockenspiel is. We've talked about this. At, I think, I'm pretty sure it's been on the last two albums. It was definitely on um, on Jamiroquai. Yeah. But they just like weird instruments, so that's expected. Yeah. Um. But it pops up on this one. Huh? I guess just kind of give that a little more of an innocence, a twinkling sound to it. Um, kind of pair with this really, uh, I, I like a really nice melodic lick where it's like just very simple guitar work where it's drumming one note up and down. But it, it works to kind of give it a simplistic vibe um, before, you know, the glockenspiel on keyboard kind of make it sound very pretty. I agree, um, but I still think you're screwing with me. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just like subconsciously drawn to Glockenspiel. Like it's just like it's like pulling me in. If I mean, I do like one of your favorite albums has Glockenspiel prominently featured. <laughs> Speaking of which, our next album should be uh, we should listen to Gary S. Glockenspiel. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> no, no, but uh, yeah, I do like the. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just because it provides such a distinct. Like it's hard to mistake a Glockenspiel for anything else, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's so cutting through, it can't really get buried in instrumentation too well. Mm -hmm. So I think that may just be part of it. And the, this this song particularly had a, another good effect, as I was talking about earlier, to move away from the Glockenspiel talk. <laughs> um, they had a a, a distant synth that mm. was like a little bit shaky, like it, it was on a, a tape that was played a few times too much, you know. Yeah, I, can't, I I like to compare it to like whenever you're like uh, driving on a hot day and you look way off in the distance, you kind of see those like heat waves coming oh, off the yeah, road. Yeah, yeah, It's like that, but with synth. Yeah, that that was a really nice sound. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the song overall is just uh, pleasant on the ears, even if it's like a little. Uh, obviously, the lyrics are <laughs> a bit dark. Yeah. Um, even for this album, and uh, what was I gonna say? Um, I, I did read um. For this song, they're and I thought it was interesting because I didn't get this impression at all. I so said they're trying to emulate the sound of the Beach Boys. Uh, <laughs> what? Well, yeah, that, what? <laughs> they're trying specifically from uh, their album Pet Sounds, which I'm like, hmm, that's not what I got from this time. Are, are they sure they, they like, listen to the right Beach Boys? Yeah, maybe they played them in reverse or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I guess it's this is more pleasant on the ears um, in some ways, kind of like the Beach Boys, but. Uh, <laughs> Not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if Tom York has actually ever listened to music. <laughs> if that's man, what he, if he thinks that Beach Boy sounds like this. Man, this this cake you made is great. What's your secret? Well, I was trying to mimic ice cream. Huh? What? <laughs> like, I guess cake. Sugar. There's sugar. Like there's some ingredients, but you know. Yeah. Very distantly related. I Though, guess they do want food, to... but. <laughs> Though, if you do want to have a little bit of an anxiety attack, watch the music video for this one. Um, because I was looking it up at uh, some of the music videos, and this one uh gave, gave me the goose pimples. Basically, a uh, Tom York is wearing, I guess, like an astronaut helmet. Uh huh. Like the cameras, the entire music video is just like a. 
like a head-on shot of his face in this astronaut helmet as he's singing the song <laughs> and the helmet slowly fills up with water oh no uh, and then that entire instrumentation which is like two minutes long uh it's just him underneath the water like and he's, he starts blinking more and more rapidly <laughs> it's like oh yeah that i'm like oh i, I don't enjoy this That's especially nice. with how pleasant the song sounds so like there was no he didn't have a tube in his mouth or anything to breathe no he's he's completely uh submerged so he held his breath like, for two minutes holy crap uh, maybe maybe it was like a minute and a half but like that's a still significant a long amount time. Of time so i'm like i'm like oh yeah. that's um, a long time to hold your breath without remaining completely motionless I mean, his. I mean, his head was just stuck in this helmet. So, Ugh. I mean, whenever his like vocals came back in, they it drained like super fast, <laughs> and you could legit tell like he was like went <gasps> like <laughs> like he really went for a big breath huh. before like lip syncing uh, with the vocals. I'm intrigued, but that's gonna that's that's too much. I don't I don't think I want to watch yeah. that. <laughs> I'm like I don't like that at all. Um, Jump to track number eleven then lucky 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 so you know this again it's gonna just be me rehashing points i i kind of wanted a bit more from this song like it's a, it's a fine song it has progression um but it's just kind of the same progression that we've been getting you know it grows and then it throws in the choir which has been done in the past and then you know yeah it's that's been the move for a couple of songs um yeah i mean I'll, I'll actually agree with you on this one where i don't think it brings anything as new um to the table nothing really revolutionary at the end of the album i mean obviously it fits quite well into the album it does uh, but considering it has a bunch it borrows a bunch of sounds from previous songs we, uh, I, th I think the big issue and we talk about this quite a lot when we get to this point in most albums it's not like we're looking for them to bring in freaking cannons or something as an instrument <laughs> no it's, i wish they would well have i got that'd some be, music for you we haven't done any classical yet cooper um, <laughs> that's true it, it's just they they kind of just take the previous so we're on song number 11 they they're like all right we could end it here, but it would be nice to have, you know, a song or two more. So they look back at the previous 10 songs and then basically just pick and choose things from each of those songs and then slap it into one song. And it it just feels like a rehash, you know? It's like, yeah. well, you know, I made it a tradition of visiting um, the, the Eiffel Tower every year. You don't have to make the same goofy picture of you like leaning up against it every year once is enough you know you don't yeah. have to redo it those are good pictures i mean a part of it i mean we don't know what uh like order they like created the album yeah, uh, the songs in right um so it might just be like if you switched uh this song and karma police right mm -hmm. you might be saying the same thing about karma police i think it's just a side effect of you know listen to and you listen to 12 of uh artist songs in a row um, especially songs that were all made at the same time in the same time period. Um, burnout is uh, not unexpected. Yeah. And uh, at least for me, I think the sound is sonically interesting enough. Um, carries good enough themes that uh, even if this song does sound kind of samey, I still like it. Um, uh, just because I like the sound in general. Uh, but I do agree that this one, you know, it's it's not like, it's not bad or anything, but it's it's you could kind of go elsewhere in your mind at this point. Yeah, I I will say they have um I I enjoy the breakdowns in this one, um and the guitar work at the end is stellar as always. Yeah, where it's uh kind of goes into the electric guitar, like yeah. you again, the Greenwood Brothers. Nice nice bit of fresh air to end the song. Yeah, and uh. I thought it ended on a quite energetic uh, note. And uh, that's kind of the last time we have like a guitar solo on the album. Uh, since the next song kind of goes back to the more uh, laid back vibe. Yeah. That we've seen on several songs. Jump into track number 12 then. Yeah. The Tourist. The tourist. Track number 12. And like I was just saying, uh, a little more laid back vibe. Um, little. Oh, like very laid back five, I guess, <laughs> even compared to the rest of the song. 
with Tom's kind of crooning vocals making one less appearance mm-hmm. uh, on this cut. Um, but even so, I think I think this one does differentiate itself uh, from the other songs, just because it almost. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm just kind of putting this on the song, um, or if it's like something that's conveyed to you as well. But I thought the ending was a little had a little bit of a hopeful note. Um, like kind of with this like soaring uh, guitar that is kind of a little angelic, um, like vocals coming up. Uh, I don't know. I, I thought it was like a little bit of hope put on a very melancholic album right at the end. I mean, I, I agree with you, but the, the one vibe I got from this was he was not joking while he was singing Slow Down. It's, it's a good song, but it overstays its welcome a lot. It, it The guitar work comes in at four minutes, four minutes into the song and kind of saves it. But before that, it's just kind of there, you know? I would say it's there. There is, yeah, I haven't said it, you know, I, everybody's on the edge of the seat for it, but I haven't said it all this album. This song's way too repetitive. It It's mm, just the is. same chorus over and over and over again for a while. So I mean, for, for me, I, I think that that allows this song to breathe. Um, which I, I know, I know, is uh, not maybe the most interesting uh, way you can approach a song. But for me, this album earned it, especially uh, here by the end of uh, just kind of letting, you know, Tom do his thing with, uh, more, with a more acoustic cut um, and kind of letting it kind of, uh, not end explosively per se, but kind of let it kind of slink out by the end. I, I, I'm all for giving uh, artists a break, but I think they should take those breaks not during the music. I think we lost him. Either that or he's so angry that he's... Hey, so, no, no, sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. I think... Oh, well, good thing we're near the end because he keeps cutting. I was saying I'm all for giving an artist artist break breaks, but I don't think it should be in the middle of music. Oh, like I think the song builds appropriately enough. Like you said, by like three and a half, four minute mark, the guitar comes in for the rest of the song. Um, so it's kind of like a epilogue of sorts, right, to the album. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if if the guitar break didn't come in and it was just like Tom's vocals in the acoustic guitar, maybe that'd be you know a bit different. But I think it it finished it out on a strong note. Hmm. I think this is a more appropriate ending than, say, Lucky or No Surprises. I, I think I like the ending of Lucky a bit more than this one, but to each their own. To each their own. Maybe, again, maybe I just like the little more hopeful head. Yeah. So that is the last song on the album. Cooper, what are your yes, favorite and least favorite songs on this album? Yes, I've got a. I like a lot of the songs on the album, but I think the. It, I don't have too much of conflict with saying that my favorite songs are definitely uh, "Paranoid Android," is a uh, masterclass song. Um, it goes in. It has four distinct sections that all blend seamlessly together. Uh, covers a lot of different emotions while being cohesive, and it's just a. It's just fun to listen to, uh, despite how kind of depressive it is. Mm-hmm. It just carries this very uh, unique energy that uh, you don't really find uh, even in today's music, even though it's often been imitated. Um, and then also, I'd like to uh, kind of stick on as a favorite is uh, Exit Music for a Film, uh, just because I think it's got uh, some one of the best payoffs in uh, alt rock, as it just kind of builds and it kind of crescendos into this cloud-bursting moment. And then uh, I guess I'll also say uh, my least favorite um, is probably, uh, to no one's surprise, was uh, Let Down. Uh, just, I, I, I understand the feeling they were going for, the more poppy sound. But uh, honestly, it, it should have just been cut from this, song, uh, this album. Yeah. Um, kind of stuck out and uh, was more of a gap than a, uh, like a... Uh, bridge to the next section of the of the album yeah i mean it's still a good song just maybe misplaced yeah yeah i'll I'll, smack my microphone again 
Uh, I'll I'll go with my least favorite first since you were talking about it already. Yeah, yeah. letdown is by by far a letdown. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's funnier the second time. <laughs> Comedy comes in threes. Um, like I said, there was some nice electronic stuff in it, but otherwise it's just not a. I don't know. It doesn't fit. Not super great. Um, and then for favorite, I'm gonna have to say either electioneering or exit music for a film. Um, those were just two of the ones that I liked more. Um, Paranoid Android was good, but you know I voiced all those complaints earlier, and I I I don't think that it reached the status of being my favorite on the album. So fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, jumping to the ratings, then the ratings. Uh, we have a one through five system here. And I'll go through it quickly, since I know Matt is probably the only one listening to this podcast right now. <laughs> um, we have one through five. Five out of five is showroom, cream of the crop, uh, top of the barrel, top shelf. And then one out of five is scrapyard, bottom of the barrel, uh, basically the the little burnt ends of the fries that get all soggy from the oil at the bottom of your little little cup of fries you know this is those uh dvds you find like those huge like, five foot diameter bins in walmart they're like one dollar each right yeah exactly it's uh a ripoff of ice age four not even <laughs> ice age four it's a ripoff of it so what? to give you a bit of feeling for our rating systems and you know it can go you know high showroom low like new that kind of thing to give us a little bit more variability so cooper what do you think of this i album? mean i've obviously been speaking extremely highly of this album um sometimes you know albums with like this kind of much history this much uh kind of it's a trendsetter this changed the game hop on up you know, they don't necessarily live up to the expectation or maybe I've not aged as well mm -hmm. as whenever they were first released. Uh, but um, this has been an album that I found uh, myself coming back to time and time again. Um, I just think it has a very unique energy. Um, it managed to be cohesive while working in some interesting ideas. Um, the instrumentation is excellent. Uh, Tom York's vocals, uh, I feel, um, are very good and uh, convey the emotions and themes of the albums perfectly. And uh, overall, I mean, they're, they're, it's not like completely strong all the way through. Like I said, Letdown's a little bit of a letdown <laughs> of the album. Funny uh, there the is. third time. <laughs> but uh, I mean, overall, it's 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 pretty tight. And uh, for an album, you know, 50, pl uh, 50 uh, plus minutes long, I never, get bo never got bored of it, and I still have it. So I think I'll have to give it a uh, rating of showroom. Wow. This, this is something uh, I think no one should uh, miss out on. If you're a fan of alt rock or just Brit pop in general, this is like uh, this is a must listen. Wow, pretty high praise. Um, so I'm going to turn around and immediately undermine everything you just said. Oh, wow. Um, I definitely felt the 50 minute length. I got pretty bored at the end of this. Um, you know, going into this, I thought, you know, I listened to the first half of the album uh, once and then I sat down and listened to the whole thing. Um, I was like, yeah, this is, you know, this feels like my kind of vibe and pfft, no, I just didn't really like it. You know, it was, it may have been a trendsetter, but should you be able to differentiate between the one who started the trend and one who ran the trend into the ground? Yes. Can you always No. Um, so I think I'm going to have to give this one a low fixer upper. That's not Ooh, my rating. Wow. Um, it's just, you know, it, 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 I wasn't, I wasn't a fan, you know, it had, it, you know, it had a lot of the makings of something I would consider something I'm a big fan of, but it just, you know, I don't know what it was. It just didn't hit that, hit that chord with me. So quite, de quite divisive. Yeah. I see. And, uh, though I, I, I will, uh, I will reach out in Olive Branch, Sam, in saying that uh, a lot of this album uh, relies on the emotion to convey. Yeah. Um, and if that doesn't click for you, uh, you won't get as much out of this album as perhaps I did or someone else uh, will. Yeah, um, yeah. So. I, I can, I can definitely see that. So, 
I would say, you know, start listening to it. And if it doesn't click within the first couple of songs, stop. Um, but if it does click, obviously you'll love it like Cooper did. So hopefully it clicks because, you know, it's nice to like things. Who doesn't like liking things? <laughs> it's not, I like liking things. Yeah, it's nice. And this it's might also be a fun little bit of a fun of things, but that's another matter. <laughs> and also might be a little bit of a uh, door into the rest of the uh, Radiohead discography. Yeah, um, which I find uh, throughout their uh, eight or so albums, uh, they're all very enjoyable. They're a rather consistent band, I feel. Which means all of that genre is now shut to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Well, I I think if there's anything that uh. As a little, uh, as a little footnote to the end of the review, um, even if you don't uh, necessarily appreciate uh, OK Computer as much um, as obviously I, I have, um, I'd also recommend giving their latest album, their 2016 album, A Moon Shaped Pool, um, a listen as well. Uh, I think it's uh, they have managed to kind of. They're obviously not doing the same sound they were doing 20 years before that. Right, right. They've kind of uh, transcended into like something that's. Honestly, uh, completely different than what you find on OK. Um, it kind of takes less of the. Um, it's kind of like if this was like this depression was kind of like a fire, right? A uh, moon shaped pool is kind of like the ashes, the aftermath. It, it has a very interesting energy. Uh, but uh, yeah, obviously, if you don't like uh, OK Computer as much, <laughs> they don't change enough that it's like, oh, this is completely unrecognizable. Right, right. But it's like kind of a through line. It's a pretty good album too, yeah. but uh, I, th- I think this is probably the biggest gap we've had yet on our uh, on our ratings. I would think so, and uh, honestly, I can't say that anything that you said was invalid. Um, I just think this is uh, this co- honestly comes down to preference, which kind of shows how you know how far opinions can take you in the music realm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> come on, Cooper. No one else is doing a music podcast. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We, we came up with this idea. We came up we with this be, idea. We'll be the OK Computers of podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that is the end of the review and jumping to the ever so popular spare tire segment. I, I enjoy this segment. Just being able to talk about uh, music we've been listening to like, recently. Yeah. So you want to start us off then, Cooper? What have, what have you been listening to this week? Yeah, so I've been listening to a little bit of Bjork. Um, I've uh, never listened to her discography, so I kind of do uh, go through and listen to some of her albums. Um, for those of you who don't know, Bjork's a female Icelandic artist. Um, and uh, actually, her name's pretty pretty uh she's pretty famous i'm sure you've at least heard her name sam yeah 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 i'm trying to think of one of her famous songs i can't remember off the top of my head which is the thing she's famous but there's not really a song that sticks out of my mind that oh this is the bjork song right yeah uh even with radio it's like you know there's creep which uh pretty much everyone on the radio has heard um but yeah she's got some really interesting music like if uh if radiohead was considered uh divisive or divisive um but York would be a whole nother thing um they're, they're, i i still haven't decided whether she's like crazy or a genius on some of the mu- melodic choices she made um but i'm gonna keep listening through her albums because at least it's uh they're interesting hmm. they're kind of like if uh it's almost like if yoko ono was like a even weirder but also had more talent um <laughs> So, I don't know. I'll, I'll keep going through uh, music, seeing uh, if I can form a solid thought on it. Well, I'll say one thing: you're certainly more committed than I am. I would form an opinion quite quick, quickly and determine whether or not I keep listening or not. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's, it's, if you listen to a couple of her songs, you're like, this is hard to pin down, to say the least. Yeah. Um, and this week, uh, I was not at home for a lot of it so i didn't get to do my usual uh listening to music while i exercise so that's a good hour a day that i lost of music listening but um, i did do quite a bit of driving and when i drive i like to sing so i've been listening to um uh alone in the universe by jeff lynn's elo in preparation Ah, for the new album 
pre-gaming for the new ELO album. Yeah, kind of comes out next week. It does right. November 11th. Actually, I could have already listened to it. Really? Is it leaked? No, on November 1st, it released on vinyl and CD to pre-orders. Oh, huh, that's interesting. So there are hundreds of so people out there who have already listened to it. Um, a... Which makes me a little salty. I'm not I'm not going to lie. Uh I really wanted to be one of the first to listen to it because I really like the music. But uh I'll just have to bide my time and wait for it to release. Uh, I've been in addition to listening to Alone in the Universe, which was the 2015 uh, ELO album, I've been re-listening to the two singles released so far, and I will say they have grown on me quite a bit. They are that's good. To, that's good to hear. I think it's just getting used to with the age of the band. It's getting used to the style change with each new album. Right. Um, I I I still will say, as I talked about last week, uh, time of our life. The opening lyrics are so stupid <laughs> but the song is good the it's just so stupid though so i can i can well, get i'll get past the stupid the song's really good but the opening lyrics are dumb the what are the uh, initial impressions uh from those who've heard have you read any of the reviews or nope, such? I've, I've been trying to stay uh completely blind so, especially since i'm both on both the um elo subreddit and the uh, elo circle jerk subreddit <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been trying to avoid spoilers for that, so uh, just, no, that's, I think that's the way to go about it. get your own opinions first. Yeah, so but I'm well, I'm really uh, excited for to listen to it and then for us to review it the following week. So yeah, so I guess uh, well that will mean that we'd review it on the uh, 17th mm-hmm. uh, since it comes out on the 11th, and uh, we'll uh, discuss what we'll review uh, in the week in between there. And I'm excited to uh, listen to a new ELO project. Uh, this will be my, this is my, I'm a virgin ELO fan in terms of listening to a new album. So I'm excited. Yeah. Actually, am it, does it come out on the 11th? Maybe it's the 7th. I think it's the 7th. Or maybe uh, the I, that'd still be something that I would probably want to review. Though. No, no. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm saying we'll listen to it the following Sunday, but I'm pretty sure it comes out on the Friday, on the 8th. Because I was talking, okay. talking about we didn't want to turn around and immediately review it. You only it. have a day to review yeah. it. But, so. yeah, but I'm looking forward to that. I mean, Sam Sam's uh, converted me into an ELO head. So, yeah. through sheer force of will. Forcing you to listen to it while we're in the car. <laughs> I have locked my felt, uh, myself into uh, enjoying Whale Song. Oh, so. it's, it's a great song, man. Great song. <laughs> But anyway, thank you all very much for listening to this week's Audio Shop Podcast. Uh, as always, if you're tuning in on Twitch and you like what you hear, you can head on over to YouTube at uh, Audio Shop and find all of the archived episodes there. Um, and if you're listening now on YouTube and you want to be part of the uh, ever-active Twitch chat when we uh, do these live... <laughs> Um, you can hop on over to twitch.tv slash audio underscore shop and listen to us live on Sundays at 8 p.m. Um, unless is, otherwise stated. Yes, or unless Cooper hasn't eaten dinner um, and decides he probably should eat dinner before we do this. Um, Which, speaking of uh, that, we uh, you can find out uh, the times and days and what we'll be reviewing. Uh, on our Twitter, which is at audio shop 14, which you can also see in the about us uh, page on our Twitch uh Twitch channel, and uh, you'll also notice a suggestion box, uh, which you can put in albums for us to review. And uh, so far, we've been working our way through them pretty well. So uh, throw in a name, and we'll uh, give it a look-see. Other than that, thank you all so much for listening, and we will be back here same time, same place next week. Same audio shop time, same audio shop place. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I guess different time because you know it's like the daylight savings time. So really, it's like we're an hour forward yeah um, then i mean i don't think we have too many listeners that aren't in a daylight savings time zone uh, oh no i'm just thinking like in a temporal sense yeah yeah i don't know we like to get ph- philosophical on this channel mm-hmm. well, <laughs> see you later shoppies oh yeah, i guess no that's not very philosophical no <laughs> see you guys see ya <laughs>